Well, it's very tough, close to call. They've met 24 times previously. Ronnie has won 13 to John's 11. Ronnie, perhaps significantly, has won the two most recent encounters, including their last meeting in the Scottish Masters, which O'Sullivan won six frames to four. I wouldn't know who to pick. Maybe Jane Hoffin can help us. Jane. Well, strangely enough, Doogie, the bookies here, William Hill, on the first level of the Crucible last night, had John Higgins as the slight favourite to win this final. But overnight, a huge amount of money has gone on to Ronnie, probably because of John Higgins' mammoth, titanic battle with Matthew Stevens and Ronnie's relatively easy in comparison passage to the final. They're now both at five to six. They cannot be split. And incidentally, if Ronnie were to win the title, then it would be this bookie's worst result for quite a few years at this World Championship. Championship. Ronnie, just like his good friend Jimmy White before him, has definitely become the punter's pal. Thanks very much indeed, Jen. Yeah, well, that doesn't surprise me. John Parrott, who's with me this afternoon, five to six the pair. Yeah, absolutely right. Mm -hmm. 100%. There was a couple of firms this morning when eight to 11 evens one and the other way round, and mm. they soon tighten that up. It's five to six the pair. Yeah. How significant is the fatigue factor going to be? Because you and I both spoke to John last night after that semi final one. He did look drained, didn't he? He, he, was, he was very tired. Uh, Mentally, it's, a, it's difficult to pick yourself up again. Uh, he's going to ha obviously have to do it today and, and try and get a decent start to show Ronnie that he, that he isn't mentally tired. It's a big ask of him again. Ronnie's come through the tournament a lot easier than John has. Yeah. Uh, we can't pick a winner, obviously. Uh, Ronnie, surprisingly, made his first century at 10 and won his first ranking to him at 17, and yet it's taken him eight years to reach this final. We expected it before now, I suppose, didn't we? We did, but he also mm. come on the tail end of probably the best player to play the game, and Stephen mm. Hendry had him a couple of times. Semi-final, probably the best game I've ever seen. He mm. lost in that. He would have beaten anybody but Hendry on that day. So he's been a little bit unfortunate as well. But I also think he's like everybody else. He's grown up and matured, and he's, mm. he's a better player for it now. Yeah, it's, it's a long battle. It's four sessions. It's 35 frames. Eight to come this afternoon. They both want a good start. What's your own feeling about who just might get ahead early? Um, important. Uh, John Higgins must, must show that, you know, the Yesterday has not left a mark on him, mm. and uh, he needs to, to have a good first session. Mm. All right, well, let's uh, wait no longer. Let's get out and enjoy one of the highlights of the sporting year. Wonderful atmosphere, a packed crucible, and our MC, as always, is Alan Hughes. Thank you, Doogie. And first, the talent of who you've never seen the like, and the devil may care young Rocket has reached the world final in style, holding four major titles this season and going for the greatest prize of all. Will you welcome into the Embassy World Final the very special Ronnie O'Sullivan? <laughs> superb in every department and a winner of 14 major titles whose class and determination have seen him lift the crown once before. Ladies and gentlemen, into the final, will you welcome please the reigning United Kingdom champion and former Embassy World Champion, the young wizard, John Higgins. to the third man involved in this final, Irian Williams, the 45-year-old Welshman who takes charge today of his first world final and thereby realises a lifetime's ambition. We wish him well too. What a final this could be. John Higgins, the world number two, Ronnie O'Sullivan after three losing semi-finals at last in the final, ready to play for the trophy. And I think just about everyone in the game felt that one day... Eight frames to come then. Enjoy it all live with us this afternoon. Let's say good afternoon to our Thank commentary team, Willie Thorne and Dennis delivery. Taylor. Good afternoon, Doogie. And what a feast of snooker we have in store for us here. As Jane Hoffman was saying, a lot of money gone on this man here. And everyone wondering if John Higgins can make a quick recovery from that epic semi-final against Matthew Stevens. Yeah. 
that's a nice little nudge off the brown to take that cue ball tight on the ball cushion <coughs> what a great return from Ronnie O'Sullivan and I don't know about you Willie, I've been so impressed with Ronnie's tactical game over the last 15 days here. Yes, you, well, you would have to agree that's been the, the most significant thing. I think the reason that Ronnie's maintained his, his natural flair throughout the tournament, when he has had to bite the bullet, i.e. when he has lost position, he's not played a reckless shot. He's given everything 100%, and I think that's the main reason he's in the final. We all know how good he is. Perhaps the only reason he's never made the final before, he's not given the, the game the respect it deserves. He has done that this week. <coughs> the match and we've had three great safety shots one after another. Just look at the red balls so that's going to cause quite a problem for Ronnie to try and nestle onto one. In fact I can't see a safety shot for him. Y Usually there is a red that you can come off a couple of cushions to land on but I can't see one. He can't get to this one near the middle pocket. Even if he landed on that, he'd leave the one next to the blue. One would have to presume he's thinking of hitting one of the two reds to the left of the black, but as you say, Dennis, even if he makes contact with them, unless he gets a half ball contact and gets on the cushion, he's bound to leave a pot. Foul on the so miss. he has left a pot. So Higgins. first chance because of the excellent snooker falls to John Higgins. Seventeen. Twenty-two. Don't think he's on the red that he intended, but he can pot this and head back towards the blue again. Twenty-three. Better angle on the pink here, though. Just a little bit short with the cue ball again, but <coughs> the reds are ideally placed, so even if he's not absolutely in perfect position, there's always going to be a choice for him. Yes, if this wasn't the first frame of this Embassy World Championship, we'd already be saying you'd expect him to win the frame from here, because this is an ideal opportunity. 
he's sound, he's a little, you can see a, detect a little shake of the head there, so obviously still feeling the nerves. But anything that settles you very, very quickly is a high break. 37. So Higgins will be extremely settled if he goes on to win the frame at this visit. Just once again, he's a little bit short with the cue ball. He's got to go away from the black again. He's got to try and find the gap through the reds when potting this one. And that's close to the middle pocket. Foul. He just couldn't get himself into the ideal position there. I think it is 37. And always the possibility when you're canning into other reds of losing control of that white. An O'Sullivan special, the long, dead straight red, stopping perfectly on the black. We talked about a high break settles the nerves. When you knock a long one in like that, that certainly settles the nerves. Eight. It started like it's going to be a classic. I'm sure it is going to be one of the great finals we've had here at the Crucible. Nine. I want to take second best here. He played just a can in the red just below the pink for the red in the opposite corner. But as you would expect for somebody of Ronnie's class, always gives himself Seven. options. Very rarely Ronnie plays for one single red early on in a break. Always likes to play for two or three. to be looking at the scoreboard on his maybe way ahead of himself thinking of the difficult red near the right middle pocket there 21 he knows he will need that difficult red but he's got four easy ones to be going on with and it's always fascinating to watch a player to see how they're going to go about bringing that ball into play. 28. Yes, one would, one would presume that Ronnie will pot these last two reds below the pink with colours and then try and leave an angle on the next pink to move the red away from the middle. At least then he knows whatever kiss he gets, he's got 35. the one next to the blue. Especially when the ball's so tight to the cushion. Well, he took the option there, you see. That's why the only reason he played it, he knew he would have been on the one next to the blue. So, I mean, now he's got the nice roll in blue, red over the pocket, could pinch the frame. 41. So that in off is proving very costly. 55. It's a little bit unlucky for the white to drop in the middle pocket. But John 56. just couldn't quite get himself into the ideal position and it's proving very costly. Just 
Obviously, you haven't needed. Ronnie's just glancing again at the scoreboard. And not a bad first frame. And the crucible crowd are so knowledgeable. You've 66. probably heard the round of applause when the yellow went in. It wasn't for the difficulty of the shot. It's because they, like the players, know exactly when the opponent needs snookers. 70. Seventy-five. Eighty-one. John Higgins opened with a break of thirty-seven. He was unlucky to go in off, but all he could do was sit and watch that fantastic eighty-eight break from Ronnie O'Sullivan. And that gives him the opening frame. Yeah, plenty first frame nerves around, weren't there? Goodness me, what a start. John Higgins rode to the final. Not too many problems early on. Beat Graham Dot 10-4, then Chris Small 13-8. Looked very good against Ken Doherty in the quarterfinal, 13-6. And then, as you may have seen last night, that epic battle against Matthew Stevens. The 32nd uh, frame lasted 61 minutes. Longest frame of the championship so far. And as John Parrott said earlier, Ronnie O'Sullivan has sailed through without any problems at at all. Andy Hicks 10-2, Dave Harold 13-6, Peter Ebden 13-6 and then Joe Swale 17-11. Joe had his moments but Ronnie was always in command. Likened to Mozart by Peter Ebden and uh, you can perhaps see the comparison, the young genius. And what a start by Ronnie O'Sullivan. John Higgins has been a bit prone to in-offs. He had a few in the semi-final and uh, that one cost him dearly as Thank well. You. Second frame, John Higgins the break. Second frame then, back to William Dennis. 70. Well, the first frame is anything to go by. We thought it was going to be a classic encounter. Just one mistake only from John Higgins. And that was when he went in off in the middle pocket. 11 has was just shown that certainly an easier passage as far as frame scores were concerned in getting to this embassy championship final but make no mistake Higgins is very very match sharp an unwanted double kiss has left the first chance in this frame again for John Higgins That red is going in the corner pocket. Six. <clears throat> Played it well, but they didn't seem to split. He just seemed to stick on them here. Let's just have a look at this. Yeah, he hit the pink and it only moved a couple of reds, but he's okay. Seven. Yes, I think the unfortunate part, as you said, Dennis, he hit the pink but hit it half ball. And that's the reason only a couple of reds moved out. But good recovery. The awkward red has disappeared. Now perfect on the black. He did well to get that much pace out of the cue ball. That black was just off straight. Fourteen. He really bounced the cue ball into that to create that angle. Twenty-two. 
23. No need to go into them because the red that he's played for there was a little bit awkwardly 28. placed. But if he pots that red, it just depends whether he can get back for the blue again, but then he could go into the red to be a better target. In fact, he can get one of the other reds. He can just get between two reds. Twenty-nine. Now, if he gets this one right, he should play to screw in between the two reds and hit the little cluster of six. That would really open everything up here. Just caught the other red first, but he's still okay. 36. Yes, what a difference that kiss made. If he didn't make contact with that red, as you rightly say, Dennis, he would have been perfect on choice of two. So cue ball slightly running away from him here, blue or bought colour. 37. So good positional shot needed to get back into the business end of the table. And if he gets on a red next, you would expect him to score a sizeable break from here. a little bit short with the cue ball again. This red to the middle and round the back of the pink he can drop on the black here. It's played it well. 40. Very, very good judge of pace. It was a natural angle, didn't really need to play with hardly any side at all. Perhaps just a little tiny bit of right hand side. Oh dear, that's careless. Just when it once again he was in a frame winning position. 47. A careless red. You cannot afford to miss those. Couldn't have missed if he had played it dead weight, but he would have had right wrong angle. He was trying to force it to create an angle. Slight bounce, Dennis. Not, don't think it was a kick. I think that was a little lapse in concentration there. And that's another lapse in concentration. Ronnie making contact with the other red while attempting to pot that one. Well, it was pretty tight, wasn't it? So at least this time, Ronnie O'Sullivan hasn't stepped in and cleared up from John's area. 1st frame, Dennis, in his break of 37, Seven. John Higgins never had quite had control of the cue ball. <coughs> Can be said exactly the same here. So John Higgins, is, even though he's 54 points in front, hasn't settled yet because he hasn't got the cue ball quite under control. Eight. Well, that very good red into the middle pocket should give John this frame. Already 62 points in front. 15. A red and a blue would be enough to leave Ronnie needing a snooker, so 
either pink or blue will do off this red. Sixteen. Twenty-two. Twenty-three. I was so impressed by John Higgins last evening against Matthew Stevens, two frames down, and won the first three. Thirty. It's always going to be 31. a great final, regardless of who got through between Matthew and John. But, but we have quite a good contrast between these two players. I hope they both play to the best of their ability and we'll have a fantastic final. 39. Great match you were talking about yesterday evening. I'm sure the millions of viewers who watched that one will be glued 45. to their sets now. The last frame took over an hour. We've had two frames today in less than half an hour. Ronnie O'Sullivan stays seated. So Higgins not really in top form yet, but his four breaks of 47 and 45 drawing the level at 1-1. One, one. Yes, as Dennis says, all you can really ever ask is that both players play to the peak of their ability and John, they've both settled well and that's what you're looking for. Yeah, and I think uh, I mentioned earlier that I was a bit worried about maybe John might be a bit tired, but I think we've allayed that fear. It looks uh, fresh as paint there. Yeah. Would you worry about that red that he missed to let Ronnie in briefly in that frame? Um, it wasn't. It was a little bit careless more than anything. He was just trying to bump it a little bit. It wasn't just a straightforward angle to try and keep it on the black and uh, just took his eye off it, but we can all do that one. Yeah, so nothing, no significant uh, moments so far it gives you a clue as to who might be in there. I think, Ron I think Ronnie is sitting there itching to get in the balls. You can mm. see that even when John is making the break, he's looking at the table and he is absolutely desperate to get to the table because he thinks he's going to score every time he's there. Um, but he may, if John keeps playing like he is, have to sit down a little bit longer than he expected because it's uh, John Higgins is a very heavy scorer himself. It's going to be a great final. It's certainly been a very impressive right, start frame. by both players. Ronnie Sullivan to break. Yes, frame three. Ronnie's left the tempter there for John Higgins. Might be able to take this on. Leave the black into the same pocket. He played in such a way as the only red he could leave would be the one that he took on and that's exactly what's happened. So as John Parrott was saying, Ronnie's itching to get in amongst the balls. Uh, here's the chance for him. Yes, and an even worse scenario of missing that red is when he cannoned into the black, it just freed the black that little bit more. So one. a little bit more room to negotiate this next kiss. But we just try and flick away the left hand of the two reds, or we can still into the right hand one. We're certainly be flicking one of them away. But slightly the wrong Eight. angle to go for black again this time, unless he catches the edge of the pack. There's the little cannon to hold for Nine. that black. And now he's perfect. <coughs> Seventeen. Seventeen. <coughs> Twenty-two. 
34. Just gone about seven or eight inches too far, but he can get round the black into the same pocket as the red if he plays just with a little bit of left hand side. Well, he's actually really punched it in to go for the blue, so any aspirations of a maximum 25. has disappeared. Good angle on the green to go into them, and should he wish. I thought he might have just rolled that in for the black, but still one more loose red at the edge of the pack, and because he's playing for the brown, that's the red he's playing to get on now. Twenty-nine. This is not a good angle to go into the reds. I wanted the white just a little bit nearer the top cushion. To go directly into them you'd really have to force the cue ball. I don't think you can do that. Having to use the cushion. Now how's your luck? He's played that well. Couldn't go directly into them, but he played that very well indeed. It's amazing, Dennis, isn't it, how much top spin Ronnie can can get on a cue ball. He played a shot in his previous encounter against Joe Swell from black to get onto the yellow and played it plain ball with top spin as he did there. And you just actually see the white ball just gathering speed with the top spin. He hits that as good as any player in the world. Just watch how the white gathers speed here. It's going through at normal pace, then all of a sudden top spin takes effect. Fantastic shot. 39. Well, that's exactly what it's like from the opposing player's point of view. Some players watch the play on the table, some players prefer not to. Because there's absolutely nothing you can do when you're sat in the chair. 45. You just got to keep your composure and wait for your next chance. 46. Well, the match time is yet to reach half an hour. We're going to be virtually three frames into the match when we reach the half an hour stage. What a start. 53. This is poetry in motion from both his players so far. I think we've had two pots missed. And when they have been missed, they've been punished with 40 or above. So I think we're going to have a few centuries in this match. 54. Maybe five or six. There's Ronnie tucking everything in there, the waistcoat being tucked in. I think he's learned from his mistake earlier in the tournament when he fouled the ball accidentally, just leaning over it, just like that. I think uh, the big... I was just going to say, really, the big Canadian, Bill Werbenek, would have had struggled to reach that one. From, from the early part of this match, it's apparent that Ronnie certainly seems to have the cue ball slightly under better control than John at the moment. Every time Ronnie's got in at the moment, he's hardly lost position, whereas John's just struggled a little bit with the cue ball. It's very exciting stuff. 65. 66. <coughs> 73. Well, 74. With blacks with the remaining reds, he can actually tie the high break. 
we're on 74 there's another 66 including the possible 140 available well what a start that could be not anymore Eighty-one. Eighty-one on the frame. A bit unlucky when Canley into the reds, but John Higgins stays in his seat. That eighty-one break it was enough to take the frame for Ronnie O'Sullivan. What a great start. He now leads two frames to one. Well, he had a chance there, as you said, Willie, of equaling that high break. And uh, in fact, Joe Swale holds the high break with 140, and, and Ronnie almost equaled that. He just ran out of position on the final blank. And uh, that was quite amusing to see Joe and Ronnie discussing that. Uh, and Ronnie tried to double the long black, and it didn't go in. But uh, just the one shot, just the one shot was missed there from uh, John Higgins at the start. Yes, he took the shot to nothing around the back of the pack, as we can see here. What we will notice here, he hit it slightly too thick, which meant it hit the left-hand jaw as we look at it first. And of course, what happens when you hit that jaw first, it always goes along the top rail. So there's always a slight chance of leaving that red. He left the red, O'Sullivan replied with a sparkling frame. 81, and as you rightly say, break. Dennis, could have been 140. But this is, this is just wonderful to watch. It's, we've got the best seat in the house at home, and Dennis and I are just behind the black spot in the commentary position. It's absolutely electric out there. the half hour mark and we're in the frame before the mid-session interval and there's the average shot duration 19 and 17 seconds that's, that's just a second faster than Steve Davis and myself used to play and <laughs> Yes, I think there was a one missing before the 17 and 19, Dennis. <laughs> Not that you were a slow player, nor was Steve, but these two do really think exceptionally quickly. And turn to pot for quickly too. Great pot. The beauty of that shot, of course, the only way it can go wrong is if you catch the far jaw and it comes back into balk. He played it as a shot to nothing. And here's the shot to nothing playing off the two cushions. He knows he's going to get a good cue ball. He got it so good, he's got no pot available. On your Sullivan, one. Sullivan was faced with a virtually impossible snooker in frame one. He actually got away with it and won that frame. Similar situation here, lots of loose reds. No problem at all in hitting a red. But it's difficult to suggest which is the best path to get into the pack without leaving one on. quite good there to find that spot I mean the precision there was something else well, as he left a bit of a tempter for John Higgins it's just off straight this red he would finish on the black but Take an exceptionally good pot. A 
and the way he's played it hitting it on the thin side that meant that the white was bouncing a lot further than he intended and he can't really afford to be leaving Ronnie O'Sullivan openings like this One. John Higgins has of course been there before to uh, the Embassy World Championship final having won the event this is Ronnie's first time and of the two players Dennis you would have to suggest that Ronnie certainly without any Eight. doubt looks the more relaxed of the two Nine. Yes, I think it's important for John Higgins to stay with Ronnie in this opening session just to recover from that semi-final with Matthew Stevens. But Ronnie does 16. look very relaxed as he has done throughout the whole championship. Of course, Ronnie's had the more successful season. He's a four-time winner already. John did win the UK Championship. And he won it in style, beating Mark Williams 10-4. The rest of John's season have been semi-finals and quarter-finals. He's gone out early in a few of them. This is so many similarities between these two stars. They were, they're both 25 years of age. They've both rapidly gone to the top of their the tree in their profession, which of course is the professional snooker's career, and both made over 200 competitive centuries. They're so similar in every department. Higgins has of course won f more ranking events than Ronnie. So the more consistent of the two is definitely Higgins. 37. go too far there, played for the red at the back of the bunch, might just be able to get through, that's the one he played for, might just be able to sneak the one in to the right of the pink. Where's the cue ball? 46. Now this is a tough pink that he's faced with and I don't think he can get onto a red. If there was a red available into the left corner, Ronnie would think about the pink but no value in that. Yellow ball. Pushing the yellow safe, protecting that 47 point lead. <laughs> Didn't want to catch the blue. Had he have missed the blue, he would have dropped on yellow, green or brown. just not happening at the moment for John Higgins. Without the kiss this would have been a pot that Ronnie may have refused. As it is now he'll certainly be taking it on as a shot to nothing. As at this time the jaws are going to cost Ronnie. No, the double kiss has saved him. Without the double kiss there the red would have been a potable red but the double kiss has taken the red away from that pocket. Once again, when you hit them thick, they always go along the top rail, but there came the saving grace, the double kiss, right into a safe position.
out the little flick on the green. There was a chance of a snooker behind the brown there. <coughs> John has to be careful that he doesn't cannon a red over the right corner pocket. He's heading back down towards the green off this one. And he has pushed the red towards that pocket. Far from straightforward, and he's got quite a bit to do with the cue ball. I have to force this, otherwise it cannon into the reds and pink. It's very, very easy for these to go astray when you're queuing down on the ball like this. If you catch it too thick or too thin, anything can happen. It has to be just right, and just right it was. It's always the same when you play these shots in the things. When you hit them right, they look great. When you hit them wrong and everything goes astray, you question whether you should have gone for it. Queuing down on the ball, centre ball striking, perfect. The reward is not good though, very unfortunate not to be on the blue. straight up and down this could go wrong he needs to just glance off the red and that looks like the black foul and a miss <coughs> on yourself and seven well there is a red into the middle pocket past the pink so Already 56 in front. It looks like Ronnie O'Sullivan will be going to that mid session in devote. 3 1 up. Just the start he wanted. 7. 8. Just 41 and a half minutes play. We're heading very shortly to the mid-session interval. Fifteen. The frame now safely in the bag, so Ronnie can just relax 16. a little bit here and try and clear just to keep John Higgins off the table. Well, we know one thing for sure after these first four frames that O'Sullivan looks in sparkling form. Well, he's still in sparkling form. He flew the red, but John Higgins was already out of his seat, so he concedes the frame. Ronnie O'Sullivan goes to the mid session interval. He leads three frames to one. Well, the excitement's still here. No wonder. Four electrifying frames with Ronnie O'Sullivan looking in uh, superb form. Thank you. The fifth frame. Ronnie O'Sullivan to break. Okay, that's enough. Thank you. Long, long way to go, of course, and. Uh, We've seen enough of uh, John Higgins' strength in keeping in touch with his opponents when uh, they look to be getting on top of him. But you would think that he really can't afford to let Ronnie O'Sullivan get too far ahead. He's a great front runner. <coughs> John a little lucky there not to have left 
a pot on he caught that one all wrong Can John Higgins get through to this red in the left centre? That was an attacking safety shot from Ronnie. And as you can see, he's left a chance of this red. Well, it was a half chance. Having a look, see what damage he's done. As I say, it was a half chance. The problem with this shot, of course, he wasn't certain where the cue ball was going to finish. And if you look where it finished, he wasn't on a colour. Well, that was a long way away from Ronnie. But this is one of the things about snooker. Ronnie went full bloody for that red. He's missed it. But as you can see, he's not left anything easy for John Higgins. Other days you miss and leave your opponent an easy starter. It's a good white, but it's a red came very close to the left corner. I think Ronnie can get through, you can see he can. Just stopped asking the referee to clean the cue ball. a thin contact and making certain he didn't hit it too thick overcut it but once again he's left the cue ball near a cushion so there's nothing easy for John Higgins to go at yeah just wondering if he'd, he'd spotted a plant the two reds near the black but I don't think he's aiming for that it's just playing safe but there was two reds nearly in line he had a look at them before you take it on but they're not far off Now a definite <coughs> potting chance for John Higgins. He would have liked something slightly easier, but you don't expect him to not to uh, miss this from this range. could have finished either a bit further or a bit shorter and it'd have been perfect on the pink now a more difficult colour yes and you get the feeling that John Higgins is going to take a colour on he'd be disappointed to only make one from a chance like that but there's no colour straight forward so he's thinking of the green and he'll be playing the pot Now, as 
manages to pace the cue ball. I think he thinks it's too pacey. And he was right. Four. So that could be it. This may be a red into the left centre, but boy, that would be a, a risky shot to take on. John Higgins, four. We say on many occasions, Ray, don't we, that mid-session interval can just throw a player out of his stride and just those these first few shots in this frame, Ronnie O'Sullivan doesn't look like the same player who played the first four frames. John. He's made a couple of uh, bad safety errors, but he's not been punished for them. He hasn't left anything real easy. And that means that John has been really having to work hard. And that one was a bit of a stretch, and he had to do a bit with the cue ball. But now he's left Ronnie a much easier pot. But he, he really has got a lot of work to do here to uh, make a substantial break, the way the colours are situated. Well, he looks to have a nice angle on the green to play for the red in the balk end. Well, he obviously didn't. He was very straight on the green. And that's not going to help matters. Four. So realistically, at the moment, as you say, only the bought colours to play for. He'd love to get the pink or the blue on the spot. Five. Now he's coming down to have a look. I'm just wondering whether he's thinking of taking the chance and trying to cannon into the black or those three reds to bring the black into play. It'd be risky. Now he's just decided to play on the loose red, but hasn't played it too well. He might not be on anything no. here. Well, that red just goes, but... The way the cue ball is near the cushion, it'd be a good shot to pot it and get on a colour. Of course, the red closest to the cue ball is potable, but very difficult. Well, the acknowledgement uh, as he walked away from the table about the flu, but... To be honest, it really was an extremely well-played safety shot. That's all he's played. And uh, the cue ball's finished in exactly the spot Ronnie wanted it, but he's now got to judge the pace to the brown, which he has done. But you wouldn't expect John to leave anything easy from this. Looks as if he could find a path to the three reds near the black, maybe twice across the table, whichever. Not exactly the red he played to hit, but he played it at the right pace, so he's not left anything, it doesn't appear. That was the main object of the exercise.
needs a good safety shot here. It's imperative he doesn't make contact with the pink or blue. Well, he just slid by them. Possible red into the right corner. Certain Ronnie would take it on if he knew where the cue ball was going to go after potting it. Has he got the right angle? Has he got the pace? Foul. Had the pace, not the angle. On your seven, four. And I think the red goes. The one that's near the black spot will sneak past the other. Well, that was a bad mistake from John Higgins. He had quite a target to play for. You just can't hand chances to the likes of Ronnie O'Sullivan. I mean, as I say, the first few shots after the mid-session interval, he looks as though he's just lost it a little bit. But you know, once he gets in a rhythm, and he will do if he keeps being left in amongst the balls. Well, it just shows the difference in this frame to the four previous ones. We're already virtually a minute longer than any of the other frames took. He's the longest and uh, quite a lot of plays still in this. Oh. But if he can find a way of getting at the black, and he's just looking for the spot there, and I, I do believe he's pretty straight on the red to the left, so it's all about judgment of pace. And he's just the wrong side of straight on that red and that would take him away from the black a little yes but looking at that ray I'm not certain which other core he played for obviously if he rolls the red in he'll be leaving himself and that's why he's looking at it now he wish he could get that close it doesn't look like it so he's going to leave himself a tricky black but what's the alternative Well, he managed to force it through, and now right. he forced it through too much. I think he has. That was the risk, and that was basically because he was trying to make the black as easy as possible. And now he's not on it. Ronnie O'Sullivan, fine. Everything right, <laughs> except the reds come over the pocket. But still the problem, not only potting the red, but where does he find the colour? Well, if that come, well, I was going to say, if that comes a bit further and comes on blue or pink to the middle, it would have worked out ever so well. The brown's on. The blue is on to this corner, but he might be tempted just to roll up behind the blue and pink, free them. Well, the self-same well, thing.
and now much more danger for John Higgins if he can't hit a red and get it safe this time. <laughs> Well, the red near the top cushion to the left of the black is the one he'd be trying to make contact with. That's not the red. He hits that. He leaves one. To be fair, that was a, a good snooker laid by Ronnie. And now a big chance for Ronnie with the pink in the open. One previous mistakes from John Higgins you never thought was going to be costly but now the pink's in play it could be well that's something that can happen when you're trying to hold the cue ball he played it with lots of drag and trying to pinch a bit to get a fuller contact to take the pace out of the cue ball he's forgot to get the right angle so that could have been very expensive for John Higgins it's not straightforward where it's finished for him still needs a good shot to find a colour yes and John Higgins you feel has got to take advantage of these mistakes Ronnie O'Sullivan in the first four frames never made one or well, not one that you could really put your finger on but that was careless I know what you're saying Ray you may be trying to pinch or something with the pink but there was no need to he had a choice of four reds to play on so he's just not with it after this mid-session interval and a chance now for J John Higgins to take advantage he can't let this opportunity go and a brave one fully committed six Well, it's a good pot, this. It was difficult to play it on the slow side to hold for the blue, and he's gone off the uh, three cushions, and he's a little unlucky again. He's finished exactly where he didn't want to be. He could drop the pink in, but he can't get down to the reds. The brown's certainly no easy pot. I think he'll just take the pink on and drop it in and leave himself a a distance away from the red. Much more difficult pot than he would have liked, but I think it was essentially not the pink in. 13. Yes, I think in any frame when you're behind, points are the priority. He's just four points behind now in this frame. Shot for nothing here on the red. John Higgins, 13. nearly there but the main concern was get that cue ball back to the balk end I don't know whether Ronnie will be tempted by that red and now he's not he's playing the safety off the red to the right of the black and he's missed it foul and a miss John Higgins four. well I would suggest John Higgins don't have them replaced just let him play from there three ball 
Yeah, the pink's in the way of this red in the middle, John, so he can't get to either side of it, so the free ball puts a completely different complexion on it, doesn't it? Well, it does. That was the last thing I thought of, Ray, a free ball. Absolutely. The green, of course, will count as a red. So he gets one point for that. And then, as always, after a red, one colour to follow. Not on the blue as he would like, but he sh shouldn't have a problem with this. Just roll it in. And he played the stun run through. It's Six. It's a little bit more difficult to control the cue ball. And he, this isn't the red he played for. He played for the one near the pink. Six. I just don't think his confidence is very high at the moment. That was a tough red and having to play it with pace, but when he played the blue, he stunned run through and, and that to me was a sign of a, a little lack of confidence. But at the moment, Ronnie can't do it and keeps giving John chance after chance. Now certainly, He can get through to this red. Another chance to build up a lead in this frame. One. He's a bit short of pace, but he's got the uh, the red down beyond the blue as a a saviour, as it were. Should be able to drop on that off two cushions. over adventurous with that one it was a bit straight but he would have liked to have been straighter on the blue here these well you expect him to knock them in but just a little too far away for comfort no problem in it goes 19 <laughs> points in front So he's certainly needing all three remaining reds to win this frame. Yes, and just looking at the body language there, Ray, I think he's a little bit annoyed with himself. He wanted an angle on this pink so he could pot it and stun across and maybe bring the black and the red. But as you see, it's the wrong side of the pink for what he originally intended. Trying to force through, but... If he'd have had the perfect angle on the pink, this break could have 20. carried on. Not now. 26 ahead, but still 43 left. Well, it looks an easy snooker to just push the red past the black, but we've seen how delicate a shot these, this is on, this type of shot is on this cloth. And uh, it's okay if you get it right. Misjudge the pace of the cue ball. Could be in trouble. Front Higgins. Ah, oh, that's OK. It's easy to hit. Not easy to play a good safety shot from. Lovely delicate touch there from Ronnie. Touching ball. Oh, that'll help John Higgins. Touching ball. So he fires away. I see the bit of chalk on the white. I wonder if we'll have that cleaned. Well, it won't affect this shot because it won't be any kick. 
Because when it's touching, of course, he can't move the red, just fire away. You're deemed to have hit it. He'll be trying to find the ball cushion behind the green here. And he'd be looking for a snooker on both reds. And I think he's got it. 26 points in front and in control at the moment. shot from Ronnie. It really was to control the swerve like that. But John Higgins won't be too displeased to see that red go near the right hand cushion. I think it's just a safety shot coming up, up here. He won't play the pot on this. Feeling Ronnie can get past the blue to the the red and maybe even get to the potting angle of this one to pass the far corner. There you see it. Well. It wasn't easy and John Higgins was a little unlucky to leave that path through, but what a beautiful pot from tight off the cushion. Luckily for John Higgins, he's not ideal on the colour. Roger Sullivan, one. And it's amazing how quick this young man's brain is when he cares to play an all-round game, John. He immediately found the awkward spot, kept the yellow in play. He knows that if he gets a chance on the red, the frame could be his. Yes, and that's what he did. He brought the yellow into play, he got the snooker, and John Higgins hasn't got this red safe. Don't get me wrong, it's not an easy pot, but if Ronnie O'Sullivan knocks it in, you could see him winning the frame. Never touched aside. Brilliant pot. And from nowhere, Ronnie O'Sullivan now favourite for the frame. John Higgins certainly doesn't look quite as sharp as we've seen him over the last uh, couple of weeks. He's probably still getting over the effects of uh, a wonderful match yesterday. No. He needs them all. Sixteen. And he created this opening with a very astute safety shot. But it was a very good red that he took on and knocked in. Clean as a whistle. Woo, that one wasn't so clean though, but uh, Ronnie O'Sullivan looked as if he might have lost that one. He hasn't. He's gone further ahead at four frames to one. Three frame lead for Ronnie O'Sullivan and uh, the frame winning ball, the red which set up the frame winning uh, chance, John, was played with utter certainty, wasn't it? No, very good. He's actually mm -hmm. slightly hampered on his cueing as well and he's, uh, mm -hmm. he's hitting across the ball. You can see he's, he's slightly hampered there with the green. And that can sometimes take your eye off it, but he's cued it beautifully and straight into the centre of the pocket. Yeah. Yeah. 
strange frame, the effects of the interval, as we've seen so often in the past. Happens many, many times. I mean, as I say, I, I said earlier, I think John will be delighted to see the interval because Ronnie really was in, in the zone, as it were, and he was playing so well and he looked like he was going to score, you know, 80 off every chance he got. So it's just broken his concentration up slightly and, and I think that'll probably be the scrappiest game you'll see in the whole match. Mm, yeah, a painful one for John Higgins because he did seem, for all that they both made mistakes, to have it under control for most of the frame, in fact. Yeah, and Ronnie played a couple of loose safety shots and missed a couple of pots and, and he got a few chances in the game but the balls were always awkward and horrible and he'd like to have seen a sort of game like that he could win and get himself back into it and mm. a disappointment to lose it really yeah John just seemed just a little s out of touch somehow just not quite and 100% efficiency at the moment. Yeah, he mentioned in commentary there, Ray Edmonds, he may just be still feeling the effects of yesterday, and I wouldn't blame him in the slightest for that. I mean, he had an absolute gruelling match with Matthew Stevens, and you can't begin to tell you how much that takes out of you as a player. And it, it also gets magnified if your opponent, like Ronnie O'Sullivan, he played in the first session, keeps making 70 and 80. It makes you feel tired a hell of a lot quicker. Mm, well, John, the best he can do now, obviously, is to share the session, and what a result that would be for him if he could win the next three, but uh, one gets the feeling that Ronnie is going to take control of this final in this opening session, break. don't you? Got he is at the moment, it's, mm. uh, it's a couple of big games for John, he needs to win two of them. That's a mistake. Now. Oh. And that doesn't help John Higgins uh, when your opponent plays not too good a safety shot. If he gets near the ball cushion as he meant, he leaves it. It's just the feathering of the green and, uh, well, if he gets this right, John Higgins, into the left-hand side of the pack, it could make this a very long frame. Because of the fact that that red's over the corner. Well, he's just, just about covered it up. Now, he's looked to see if there's a plant there, but there's a red on the right-hand side of the table. Second right, as we'd say. You've got the one over the corner. Now, this other red will go in this right corner pocket, and also, the, the red being near the pocket makes the pocket look bigger. Could go in off the red, worth a chance, and that's what he's taking on. So many times you play them, and because you think you've got a big pocket, it just gives you that bit more confidence to go for it. And he couldn't have hit this better, and he's on the brown. Well, he couldn't ask for a much better chance now created by that uh, brilliant opening red. Six. But this table does look grease lightning fast. Yes, he's, he's made a... his highs breaks so far this afternoon. 13. 47 his highest and the 45 that was in frame two. We associate John Higgins with big breaks when he gets chances like this and I'll be very interested now as I'm certain this packed audience will be at the crucible and what he can make of this chance. It's just so far. 14. As we've said, whether it's reaction to his semi-final match last night against Matthew Stevens, he just doesn't look on the top of his game. 
you know he's going to stick at it and, and battle away. But any player, if they can get in and just prove to themselves that they, they're in the groove with a big break. 20. Could just relax him. This is the last of the obvious reds 26. to play for. Just have a look at the pack to see if there's anything else available, a plant maybe. Well, he could just try and take away that one loose red to the left and that would leave him on another one to this right corner, but it's so precise a shot wanted. He's got the ideal angle to go into the reds. And he wants a little bit of luck. 25. If it hits the bump, he's okay. If it isn't, well... 34. He split them wonderfully well, they really have all opened up, but uh, cue ball a little near the cushion, and that red there that's just run to the middle, I think he can cut that one, that's come to his rescue. 35. Well he made it look easy, but that was a terrific pot, and he judged the pace superb, nicely on the blue. And that was as confident as a pot he's played so far in this match. Gives that nicely. 40. You heard that one. That was a different sound altogether because uh, luckily it just took the pace off the cue ball, didn't throw the red off line. But you see with the cue ball jumped. Could have been worse. didn't get into the cue ball there as much as he would like but it's okay he's come absolutely perfect on this red 49 good positional shot required now off this black and he's got a nice angle on the black John Higgins in top form, 56. you would expect him to get enough points now from this situation to clinch the frame. the black with 70 points in front with only 67 left
just the kind of tonic John Higgins needed. He's worked hard for these. Yes, and I think when you're playing a player like Ronnie O'Sullivan, who's a very natural player, you've just got to put down the the yardstick, if you like, and say, if you make a mistake, this is what I'll do. And that will just make Ronnie think a little bit. 78. If Ronnie makes mistakes and you don't take advantage of them, as John Higgins did in the last frame, then Ronnie can steamroll here. But he's taken these really well, and I agree with you, Ray, this will be a real good fillip for John Higgins, and really settle him into the battle ahead. Higgins 10th century 102 of this year's embassy championship the 50th overall and we were expecting a fair few from uh, this match the way these two players have been scoring throughout the uh, last 15 days and if he was feeling a little tired this will just make him forget it. 110. Might be a bit more bounce in his step now, I feel. 113. John Higgins well over 200 career centuries in competitive play up among the uh, the best 122 128 a great time to hit your best ball starting to look as if you were going to drop a long way behind. John Higgins proves his metal. Brilliant 135 to reduce his deficit to two. Ronnie O'Sullivan four frames. John Higgins. 50th century of the championship, the first of the final, and John, you can't overestimate the importance of that frame to John Higgins. Yeah, absolutely fantastic. He started it off with a, a wonderful red, absolutely brilliant shot. Um, you can see it here. Okay, John Virgo mentioned the pocket might be a bit big, but it wouldn't make any difference with this shot because when he gets down and cues this, it goes straight into the heart of the pocket. Absolutely fantastic, and deserved a break off it, and really is a very, very tenacious little fellow, this, this boy from Scotland, because he knew 4-1, danger signals are there, you know, if he loses another frame, he's definitely going to be behind after the session, and he just stepped up two or three gears, and after he potted the first red and a couple of colours, I said to you he was going to clear up it. You did, yep, you called it very early. Also, the, the, the commentators were talking about the pace of the table. Now, you played on it yesterday, you had a little exhibition match after the semi-final finished early, so you know just how quick this is, frame. and it's quick. This table is like a sheet of glass, it really is, and one of the hardest things to do is what he's doing now, which is breaking off. The second cushion is sliding so much that it's very difficult not to actually stick the end red out. As you can see there, usually you'd want to be behind the green, but once again, that's, there seems to be a shot to nothing nearly every frame. It's very difficult to break off on this table. And I'll prove it again, but uh, the match poised at 4-2 in Ronnie O'Sullivan's favour. Two more to go this afternoon. Back once again to John and Ray. Well, he played that as if he thought he would get it. He's played position for the uh, green, brown or yellow.
consequently not knocking it in he's left Ronnie a pot on he can get past the blue for one to the right corner here but uh, he's looking to see if there's a path through the reds or round the black I don't think there really is so we'll take this one in the middle to the left corner problem when the table is as, as fast as it is now. The players like fast tables, but uh, it makes it extremely easy if you're playing at your best, but it also finds out all the faults if you're a little bit below. If the black goes uh, to the right corner, run is okay, but I'm not so sure that it does. I don't know whether that red that's just above the black is stopping the black being potted, so I think it does, just touching as you see. So. That was pretty aggressive, and one more good pot could give Ronnie O'Sullivan a great chance. That's the view John Higgins doesn't want, sat in his table, watching Ronnie potting the balls, sat in his chair, sorry, although I don't know, they're big enough, these chairs, they're comfortable, but you don't want to get too comfortable. Well, there's just one red in the line of four behind the, and to the left of the pink that'll go through the gap. Thank you. Don't think he played for that one, but he'll settle for it. Looks as if John Higgins clearance uh, has sparked off Ronnie O'Sullivan because uh, every chance of a big break here. Yes, and I think this is Ronnie as his best. 33. His control of the cue ball is just, well, it's just touch, and of course that's one of his 34. natural gifts, and it is natural. You can't coach the way Ronnie O'Sullivan plays. just got a lovely touch and of course he's doing this under the utmost pressure this is the biggest tournament the day he's waited for all his life 42 and to play as relaxed or look as relaxed I've no doubt he's like the duck floating on the pond with the feet going 100 miles an hour underneath but he looks relaxed he's taking time to walk around the table to keep everything together well natural but also shows great character. And at the moment, I think that's just the difference between the two players. When he gets in, 47. he's got complete control of the cue ball. Up until the last frame, 48. John Higgins has always seemed to be struggling a little bit. Ronnie 
seven. Yeah, it's, it's amazing when you say that, John. It looked absolutely so, but he just lost it a little bit. It just shows you the cue ball went to the cushion, the pace of the table on the previous shot took it tight to the cushion, and just trying to hold the cue ball again took his eye off the pot, and it was never easy off the cushion. And it's given a great chance for John Higgins to counter attack here. And these are the kind of frames as we say so often. If you can win these when your opponent's missed one, when he's in, they seem to hurt more than when you make a big break. It's a big task, but uh, John Higgins is up to it. Eight. If he can keep control of the cue ball. Yes, of course, he had a foundation in the last frame when he made that marvellous 135 break. So you give him a chance to do it, but very difficult. Nine. Seventeen. Well, he won't be happy with that. He's misjudged that. Twenty-four. He's a little bit straighter on the black. He didn't want to run round off two cushions. But he's lost control of the cue ball. He won't be playing on the black now. He'll have to go up for a bought colour. Twenty-five. He'll settle for green in the middle if he's got an angle. And he has. Well, this is again the example of what we were just talking about. If you do lose control of the cue ball, and John just lost it a bit on the previous red, then just a little bit awkward on the green, now just a little bit more awkward on this red. He needs to get good position on the black to get himself back into the groove. You can't keep knocking the awkward ones in, and there's an example. It no matter what happens, you've got to keep control. He's 20 behind, and I don't think he's left this one for Ronnie, but it was a chance, and he knows there of really taking the frame, I think. It's the kind of frame that you have to win against the head, as it were, when, when you're behind. Well, Ronnie always knew that it'd be easy for John Higgins to hit, so well, he can hit the red to the right of the pink, but that won't be the red to play. He's got to play this red closest to the right corner pocket. Come off the side cushion. Just got to be careful here, you don't slide and going off the red. He needs to hit the red full. If he hits it thin, he could slide in off. Doesn't want to go in off. <coughs> That's pretty good, he's not left anything easy. <coughs> well, 
Well, he's got a fairly easy safety shot, Ronnie, but I think he's being tempted to go for a pot. He's 20 points in front. Well, that was the pot run through. It's made it, or he thought, a shot for nothing, but it's not quite now. Having said that, the red that I was thinking John could go for, the one immediately right of the black, he couldn't play that in the right corner. You've got to be careful here. Oh, caught it much too thin. He needs a bit of luck now to get away with this. He's played a bad shot. Eight points the difference. He wasn't able to hold nicely for this red that's uh, near the corner pocket. It'll still cut, and the one near the pink will go as well, but neither of them are easy. Yes, and I think the main point is that unless he gets pink or black, he's going to need both reds. Possibly game ball, he's looked at the scoreboard, he needs the pink and the last red, and he wins the frame. Fifteen. Red to go, 36 ahead, with only 27 left, so John Higgins hanging his head, he can see that this frame has gone. Fifteen. I think this frame will disappoint John a little because this was definitely a chance for him after Ronnie had made that opening 48. He slipped up and it was a chance for John to uh, to pinch it, albeit it wasn't easy. But this frame assures... Uh, Ronnie O'Sullivan, a lead, whatever happens going into tonight's session, it's going to be either 5-3 or 6-2 to him. 31. <laughs> 36. <laughs> 42 on frame. Very efficient there, the 42 clearance to take another frame, and uh, now, well, three frames clear. John Higgins, 5-2 to Ronnie.